in this part, we will talk about the Swagger, uh, the Swagger configuration and how to configure Swagger and use the Swagger UI. So, first of all, and the first thing we need to do is create a, a config package and we create a class and we call it, for example, Swagger configuration. Here, we need to add this annotation, the Spring annotation configuration. So at the startup, Spring will scan all the classes containing this, this configuration and then he will automatically inject and do all the needed stuff for, for this part. And also we need this, this annotation to enable the Swagger, uh, the Swagger API. So all we need to do is to create uh, a bean using this annotation. A bean is a method which should, uh, that should return, um, should return a class or a type. And when we annotate it with a bin, it's going to automatically uh, create it and inject it by Spring at the startup. So what we need to return is a docket. And this docket contains uh, the API description and the path we need, to, uh, we need to scan and so on and so forth. So here, we, we need to return a new docket using the API documentation from Swagger2. And those are the API info. Uh, here we are using the API info builder. We, I did not provide description. You can provide any kind of description. The title is the to-do list API documentation. It's the first version or the version one. And, and we will see uh, in another video how to, how to create different versions. Or uh, if you are more interested in Swagger, you can uh, you can just consult my uh, my courses. Uh, I and I have an co online course on Udemy for uh, for the Swagger API documentation. And then the description for the for the API, and then we build it. So and then the group name we create group. In this case, I call it REST API version one v one. And then we select the API. Here, the APIs we need to we need to scan, and we need to scan the base package from com to do. So it's going to be all this package, and Swagger will scan all those sub packages. And every time he he goes into a controller, the controller part, and find a specific uh, annotation, and it's going to be automatically scanned. So, and then the paths we need to include is here I have uh, already uh, a static uh, a static attribute or a constant, which is the app root, which points to the slash API because all, uh, all our API starts with slash API. So every time Swagger will find, uh, will find a URL starts with slash API, it's gonna be scanned and added to the paths. So once this configuration is done, all we need is to run the project and go to the browser and open uh, open our application. This is the application localhost, and this is our port, which is 8081. And using swagger-ui.html uh, hashtag slash. So it's, it will automatically open this web page. And here, as we can see, this is uh, our description to do list API documentation. And this is the base URL. Our base URL is localhost. And you can, uh, you can always configure it. And here, uh, here is the group, the one I specified. And here we have the API documentation. So we have all the controllers we have in our project, which is our authentication control, controller, category to do, and user. And here we can also find all the models, all the models we are using to communicate. And we have the category DTO, we have this ID, name, description, to do list, and user. And inside everyone, you can go even deeper. And we have the to do, and the to do, we have the category, and the category we can go to the user, and so on and so forth. We have also here the user DTO. And now, in the user DTO, we cannot see the category because if you remember, we have, we added the annotation JSON uh, ignore. So 
this is uh, this is the swagger and for example if I want to test one of my operations here we have all the methods which is uh, delete get and for example here it's the delete category uh, get category details create to do and so on and so forth if you want to test it all you, all you need is to provide the parameters and then you click on try it out you for example here we pass the ID and then we click on execute and it's going to be executed so this is about uh, the configuration of the swagger and the next part don't be scared it's not this short but this is uh, the basic configuration the basic java configuration for the swagger and next i will explain how to add all the different parts and how to generate the the, the api document